Okay, thank you, Randy, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can everybody hear me? Good. Um, I wish to thank the conference organizers on behalf of the East Coast Tail Association for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today. There are things you will... There are things we will never see unless we walk to them. The act of hiking frees us temporarily from the bounds of everyday living. It moves us away from the fluorescent lights, deadlines, television, and the noise. The things we, take, we hike to never tarnish and fade, never lose their lure, never fail to soothe a troubled mind and heart. Walking is the perfect exercise. It benefits the whole body as well as the mind. It's for all ages and for all stages of your life. And it's never too late to start. And best of all, it's free. In May 1994, the idea of the East Coast Trail was born in Baleen at a community futures meeting. A group of 20 people were exploring the ideas and concepts that would help shore up the economies of the rural, uh, rural economies of the communities along the eastern edge of the, of the Avalon. By May 1995, the East Coast Trail Association was incorporated, completed its first year of trail building, and was getting ready for its AGM. The requirement to maintain and grow healthy communities has been at the, a core value and a central pillar to our mandate from the beginning. The trail is managed by the award-winning East Coast Trail Association. We are a member-driven, volunteer-based, registered charity formed with the mission to develop, maintain, and protect the East Coast Trail. Our volunteers are the backbone of the association. They are the reasons we exist and the reason we will continue to thrive and prosper over the long term. The East Coast Trail consists of uh, a 520-kilometer system of quality trails, 420 kilometers along the coast, beginning at Topsail Beach, down to Cape St. Francis, running along the eastern edge of the Avalon all the way to Cape Race and onto Trapassi, the Deverville experience, basically starting in Fairland, crossing over the Avalon Wilderness area and terminating in Placentia, and the Massless Men, which starts in Fairland, runs into the Avalon Wilderness area, crosses over the Butter Pots, and comes out in, in, uh, in Renews. It's a single trail system offering a variety of choices to hikers from a deep wilderness experience to a peaceful stroll along the coast, and a special feature of the trail is that it can be accessed from 30 communities. In 1994, we embarked on what seemed to many to be an impossible dream, the creation of a world-class wilderness hiking trail located on the eastern edge of the Avalon. The development of the trail focused on the region's sound competitive advantages, experiencing and connecting with untouched natural surroundings, genuine communities, rich, colorful culture and history, preserving and sharing natural areas. Hikers spend the day walking along unspoiled cliffs through a rich natural environment, and in the evening they can choose between camping in a wilderness or staying in a bed and breakfast. In the mid-1990s, tourism represented a key opportunity for economic diversification and sustainable job creation along the southern shore in the face of the Cod Moratorium. The trail was viewed as a vital tourism asset expected to bring significant social and economic benefits to the region. And with the opportunity came the expectation, build it and they will come. The trail was positioned as an inexhaustible visitor resource that could be hiked season after season and enjoyed equally by local and visiting hikers. The savings realized by hiking would translate into extra dollars, spent on rooms and meals, outdoor equipment, souvenirs, eco-tours, and cultural activities which enhance the recreational experience. The question is, did we realize the dream, build it and they will come? The market has responded extremely well, locally, nationally, and internationally. Hikers are saying this is a world-class trail. Communities are saying the trail has created a new interest in healthy hiking, and the quality of life enjoyed has definitely been altered for the better. Local businesses are saying the trail is one of the best things that has happened on the Avalon. It is the link that binds our communities together. And the problems are stated. Our government recognizes the significant health, social, environmental, and economic contribution of the East Coast Trail Association to the tourism industry, residents, and to the province as a whole. The media also has responded from around the world, uh, has been phenomenal. And as a result, hikers are coming here from all over the world. In addition, in November 2010, the National Geographic ranked the Avalon Peninsula the number one coastal destination in the world. Imagine that. We have traveled through 17 and a half years of time, 
and accomplish much. We delivered in maintaining 265 of the 540 quality trails, maintaining public access and rights of ways and seeking a long-term protection for the trail, recognizes the value-added partner in the economic development process and created local interest, uh, local interest, national, international interest, and demand for the trail. So the promise and the expectations set in 1997 are beginning to be realized in a real and meaningful way. The question is, how has the trail impacted the economic health of the region? In 2004, Dennis Knight and Associates performed an economic benefit study to determine the trail's impact on the economy. The study provided clear evidence that the trail is playing a major role in the development of the tourism industry. Study, if you look at 2004, the study identified 26,500 hikers' visits to the trail that year, 21,000 residents and 5,000 non-residents, generating an annual incremental hiker expenditure of 1.4 and creating the equivalent, basically, of 37 full-time jobs. The study also demonstrated that the future potential of the trail was significant. A forecast for 2011 was that we would see 56,992 hiker visits, 41,000 from uh, residents and 15,000 non-residents, generating an annual incremental hiker expenditure of 4.3 and the equivalent of 112 full-time jobs. The report documented that the trail is having significant impact on the provincial economy, plus its importance. It's important to remember that the economic benefits are spread across 30 communities. The question is, how well did we do in 2011? The table outlines preliminary findings of the association's 2011 hiker count. The count was conducted between June and November using electronic counters. And we were, to say the least, pleasantly surprised with the result of 98,605 hiker passes. The results of the 2011 count, while encouraging, are not conclusive. This is a preliminary, isolated performance measure, and it needs to be taken into a larger context for evaluation. Into a benchmark study similar to the night study, only, and only then can we confirm if the night forecast was met or exceeded with any degree of, co of accuracy and confidence. In the meantime, the 2011 account was demonstrated, has demonstrated that the East Coast Trail is indeed seeing a lot of hiker activity. The question is, how do we compare to other attractions in the province? In 2004, based on 26,500 hiker visits, we placed fifth, slightly behind Cape Spear. Seven years later, when we compare the 2011 uh, association count to the 2010 top 10 provincial sites and attractions because the 2011 are not available yet. In either case, using the night forecast or the association count, the trail compares favorably to the top 10 sites, and we all realize that we have a ways to go to catch up a gross more in National Park. Walking for health and happiness. The average person today in Newfoundland gets less physical exercise in his or her life than any other time in our past. The solution is simple. We need to walk more to stay fit, healthy, and happy. The trail offers the residents of 30 communities the opportunity to hike and walk within a short commute of their home. Almost 200,000 residents live in relatively easy access to the trail. The trail is used for training by groups such as police officers, army cadets, marathon runners, Duke of Edinburgh, Boy Scouts and Girl Guides. And the association is estimating that 72,000 of the hiker passes counted in 2011 were actually local residents. The East Coast Trail has become a major recreational asset for the Avalon, providing easy access to nature through the most natural human connection to the earth, walking. So in 17 and a half years, we have constructed and opened 265 kilometers of trail. We have built a world-renowned tourism and recreational asset while minimizing the impact on the natural environment and our coastal uh, landscape. We have delivered the means, the trail, to, for hikers from 30 communities to experience the raw natural beauty of the East Coast Trail. The trail, our coastline, is simply amazing, and it's right here in our backyard waiting for each of us to embrace it and enjoy it as a lifelong friend. Number one coastal destination in the world. The National Geographic actually extolled the region's stunning natural and cultural integrity and unspoiled scenery, adding that it is one of the best kept tourism secrets around. The province should take great pride in this ranking, as it confirms that our government's investment in tourism, culture, and community infrastructure is money well spent. The article also confirms that when you build tourism products such as the East Coast Trail that combine the very best we have to offer, our, na our, na our natural, cultural, historic, and community assets, 
you create a unique tourism destination that is second to none in the world. It is indeed priceless. We must also remember that the long-term viability of the trail, and indeed the tourism industry, is dependent upon the health of our natural, cultural, and historic attractions. And the conservation and protection of our natural resources and cultural heritage is the best means of ensuring a lasting legacy and the health of our nature-based and adventure uh, tourism products. The future economic potential of the trail is very real, and the Avalon's number one ranking in the world will most certainly help enhance its value. The key question that the National Geographic ranking raises is, are we ready for the challenges and demands that being discovered will bring to our shores and our communities? The prime lesson learned from other countries included in the survey is, unrestrained and unplanned growth can easily lead to homogenization and overdevelopment, taking away from the very essence of what makes a destination appealing to visitors. In our case, for example, population growth and visitation to the Avalon is increasing rapidly, and so is the demand for access to coastal lands for residential and commercial development, and the trend continues to intensify. The trail's market attraction is based on great scenery and open, accessible coastline and wilderness, a trail showing minimal signs of development. This is also the drawing car that is fueling the coastal demand for housing, although this demand, if realized, will eventually degrade the very essence of the attraction. There is, for example, only 5% of the coastal lands in Nova Scotia remain in the public domain, and as a result, access to and enjoyment of the coast is a major issue for residents and, and tourists. There is only so much coast to go around, so a key lesson learned from other places is some places cope with the development pressures, others teeter at the tipping point, and others have failed. The question for us is, how will we do from this point forward? No, sorry, thought I missed a slide. The key challenge is ahead for us. The most strategic challenge we face today is the sustainability and long-term survival of the trail. And the four key challenges we have are keeping the trail in market-ready condition, we must be able to effectively demonstrate our capability and capacity to keep the trail open and safe for hiking. It is essential to grow the tourism and recreational value of the trail. Protecting the unspoiled natural landscape. Existing legislation, policy, and town plans do not provide adequate protection for the trail. Current protection is considered fragile at best. We need to obtain the protective measures required to assure public access and to maintain the wilderness and the natural environment around the trail. Obtaining funding for the trail and the association. The trail is generating significant economic value that is dropped directly into the economy. However, the association does not receive any money from this activity. We need to explore the options to seek and achieve a sustainable funding stream for the association and the trail. Maintaining volunteer demand and supply. Volunteers are the foundation on which our workforce is based. Our existing base of volunteers are growing older and retiring their services. And the population of our rural communities are decreasing and aging. We need a new strategy on how to attract younger people to come and spend time with us. Also, a critical success factor in addressing these four challenges is the active support under and understanding and participation of our stakeholders. Okay. Stakeholder cooperation is essential. The creation and performance-based tourism, tourism, such as the East Coast Trail, an attraction that stretches across 540 kilometers, is that all stakeholders at all levels must have a shared and holistic view of the problems of regions and communities' overall tourism strategy and the tourism resources that are critical to its health. Our stakeholders must understand how to collectively manage our tourism resources and how to make decisions that are not in direct conflict with the attraction. The quote from the 2004 Provincial Product Development Strategy, this is a critical need to protect the natural environment, heritage, and cultural assets of this province. The province needs an integrated resource management plan accompanied by a land use management plan, and the time is now. And that was in, 19, in 2004. In our case, the long-term survival of the trail is not considered manageable within the protection limits afforded by existing legislation and municipal plans, given the current and growing demand for our coastal lands. The risk of losing major portions of our natural area is real and not imagined. Access to our coastline has been a constant along the trail for centuries. It has helped shape our history, our culture, who we are as a people. It is our legacy to give to the future generations, but it is also ours to lose if we fail to protect it. 
The status quo from this point forward is really not an option. We have to make a difference starting today. The opportunity is there, and we have the capability and capacity as a province. All we need is the will to make it happen. And the cooperation and communication is essential of our stakeholders essentially achieving this goal and working together to make sound development choices is the challenge. In summary, I'd like to say that the East Coast Trail of success has been built on solid partnerships formed with business, communities, community service groups, regional economic development boards, the province, and the federal funding agencies. Together with our partners and our volunteers, we have moved the East Coast Trail in 17 and a half years from a promising concept to a valuable piece of tourism and recreational infrastructure. The promise and the expectations set in 1997 have been realized in a real and meaningful way. Build it and they will come. The challenge for us all is how far into the future will the dream continue? Will it be the treasure we leave as our legacy, our gift for future generations? As I said earlier, walking is the perfect exercise, safe, easy, and best of all, free. It benefits the whole body as well as the mind. And for all of you who are not or do not hike, you need to understand that whether or not you ever set foot in the wilderness, you cannot take it for granted. We need to protect and preserve our wilderness and coastal lands. The East Coast Trail is our refuge of concern, it is our hope for the future, and it's nature's gift to us. It's a landscape that is currently free, open, and available to us all. Thank you.